Hey everyone, hope you're doing well today. Welcome back to Scale Skills Preparatory Level. This video is lesson 10. We're going to continue on our one octave major scales. Looking at page 11 with E major, B major, F major, and B flat major. <laughs> so welcome back and before we get started i just want to say thank you to all those out there that have uh, subscribed and are following um i love that uh, i love the comments that you're sending and all that wonderful feedback uh, just makes me love what i do uh, that much more um, i appreciate all the support and uh, if you get a chance and you haven't gone over to my patreon page that's piano mountain at uh, patreon.com and if you feel like giving a little bit of support on there, maybe making a little membership donation, uh, I would highly appreciate that so much. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, of course, hit that subscribe button so you can follow up with the uh, latest uploads and all the newest lessons that I keep adding to the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in on page 11. So on uh, lesson nine, we talked about C major, G major, D major, and A major, and they all had one thing in common. They all had the exact same fingering. Now today, this lesson, it's not going to be quite that simple. Uh, plus, we were dealing mostly, well, with sharp scales. Uh, we had C major, which, which had no sharps and flats. But today's lesson, we've got two sharp scales and then two flat scales. So it's really going to be uh, quite a bit more varied and a little bit more challenging today, but we're going to make it work. So E major at the top of the page does have the same fingering that C, G, D, and A had back on page 10. Uh, the challenge now with E major is we've got four sharps. We've got F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp as our four sharps. So uh, of the five black keys on the piano, these are the four that are sharp. So everything is sharp except A. So if you're a visual person, every two black key group you come across, those are going to get sharped. And every three black key group, only the first two black keys are going to get sharped. So let's start with the right hand first. So since it's E major, you're going to put your thumb on E, right above middle C here. And our very next note is F sharp. So two on F sharp. And then our next note is G sharp. So you're going to put three on G sharp. And then we have our first cross under. So again, this is the same pattern of fingering we had in our previous lesson. So the thumb is going to come under to A. And then bring your second finger over to B. And then we have our next sharp, which is C sharp. And then our last sharp is D sharp, right before we finish our octave with five on E. All right, so now we're on measure three, coming back down. So D, which is sharped, and then three on C sharp, two on the B, thumb on the A, and then we have our big crossover. Remember you cross over to three, not four. Three on G sharp, two on F sharp, and finally we end it with one on E. All right, so let's do that one more time. So we got one on E, and we got F sharp, G sharp, and then our thumb comes under to the A, and then two over to B, three on C sharp, four on D sharp, and then five on E. Coming back down, D sharp, C sharp, B, thumb on the A, three crosses over to G sharp, two on F sharp, and the thumb on E. So like some of the other sharp scales in the previous lesson, you don't want to play on the edge of the, key, the white keys. You want to play into the keys more because you're going to be playing a lot of the black keys. And when I set myself up for E major, I really get um, uh, specifically these three fingers in position because those three fingers are going to be playing before my thumb crosses under. And when I do that, notice I already have my two and three on the F sharp and G sharp. And um, after I cross under to the A, my third and fourth finger are already up here ready to go on C sharp and D sharp. So you really want to think about those sharps and have those fingers uh, ready to go as quickly as possible. And that gives you an advantage. 
and uh, will just lead to smoother and faster playing in the long run as well. Let's look at the left hand. So we're down an octave with five on E. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna have that five on E, but my fourth and third finger are gonna be ready to go on F sharp and G sharp. So after the E, we got four on F sharp, three on G sharp. We're gonna keep going all the way to our thumb. So two on A, thumb on the B, and now we have our crossover. So remember, it's the third finger, not the fourth, but the third finger that comes over to C sharp. Don't forget two on D sharp. And then finally we have E. Coming back down, we've got two on D sharp, three on C sharp, and then this is our big cross under, the thumb comes under to the B. Bring that two over to A, three on G sharp, four on F sharp, and finally five on E. So let's do that one more time. Five on E, F sharp, G sharp, keep going to A, thumb on B, and then finally the big crossover, three on C sharp, D sharp, and then E. Coming back down, D sharp, C sharp, the thumb comes under to B, two on A, three on G sharp, four on F sharp, and then five on E. So like I said, this is all the same fingering as the previous scales, but it's starting to get a little more challenging because of the sharps involved. So it feels different in regards to those sharps. Now putting the hands together, we're gonna go slow. We've got five and one, left hand, right hand, starting on E's. Then we're going to four and two on the F sharps. Here's a checkpoint. G sharps are both threes. Now this is where you wanna pause for a moment because this is where our first cross over, or in this case, the right hand crosses under. So that thumb comes under to the A, but your left hand doesn't cross. You're just going to two. So you got two on A and thumb on A. And then you've got thumb on B and two on B. Now here's our next checkpoint, three on C sharp, but the left hand's got to cross over. So there's our threes on C sharps. And then we got two and four on the D sharps. And then we end with thumb and five. Coming back down the D sharps. Here's our checkpoint again, threes on C sharps. And now we've got a cross under in the left hand. The thumb comes under in the left hand, two in the right hand on Bs. Then you got A's, two in the left hand, thumb on the right hand. Here's our other checkpoint with the third finger. Now you got a cross over in your right hand. So threes on G sharps. And then you got four and two on F sharp. And then finally, five and one on the E's. So it's a pretty tricky scale. It's one of the trickiest I, I find just uh, within the sharp scales, uh, just because, uh, no, you got four sharps. Now we are gonna get to B major, which is five sharps, but in a weird way, I find that easier because then you're sharpening all five black keys, right? All, you're playing all five black keys. But here you gotta keep in mind, you know, you're not sharpening that A. So that's my opinion on it. Um, so I find E major and, and A major also to be just a little trickier because of that middle ground where you got a lot of sharps, but you're not sharpening everything just yet. So um, let's do the hands together one more time on E major. So five and one, four and two on the F sharp, threes in both hands on G sharp. Now after the G sharp, we have our first cross under the right hand, the left hand does not cross under. So that's two and one on A, and then one and two on B, and then the left hand crosses over, we had threes on C sharps, two and four on D sharp, and we end it with thumb and five. Coming down, D sharp, threes on C sharps. The thumb comes under the B, you got two on B in the right hand, two on A and thumb on A, and then bring that right hand over, three on G sharp in both hands, continue to F sharp, and then finally end it on E's. So like I'll say with all the scales, the most important thing of course is getting the notes, getting the fingering, 
um, and then getting the evenness. So evenness um, is important, but you don't have to get that right away because as you notice, I will pause just before a cross under or cross over because I want to take the time and make sure that I do that correctly um, and as much time as it takes to think about it so that I indeed hit the next note correctly with the correct fingering. So it's more important to pause. But of course, the goal is to play it fluidly. It doesn't have to be fast. Now, that is a goal, <laughs> a nice goal too, one day, of course, to get it fast. But uh, even this first. So this might be a good pace to get E major at before moving you know, on to B major. So you'll notice nice and smooth and that nice even tempo and to the ear, to the listener, no one would even know where those cross unders and crossovers occur. So as a player, that's a big deal. Um, but for the listener, you don't even want the listener to know that there's any of that even happening. So, uh, but that's the goal so that it just sounds like a smooth ascent and descent up and down that scale. Let's go to B major. Now B major is where things start to differ a little bit. Your fingering in the right hand is the same pattern. It's still one, two, three, and then cross under to one, two, three, four, and then end it on five. You've been doing that pattern in the right hand since C major. But the left hand is a little odd. In the left hand, you're not even gonna use your fifth finger. You're gonna start on B with your fourth finger, and you never end up with that fifth finger. So that's a little different. Um, it makes sense, but Again, just the fact that it's a different pattern um, just throws things off just a little bit and makes it a little more tricky. Now, the one thing about B major that I personally like, yes, it's still hard. There's five sharps, <laughs> but you're, use, you're playing all five black keys, so you don't have to keep track of which black key do I not hit and which one do I do. You can hit all of them, so that's kind of nice. Um, and that means you're really only playing two white keys at this point, um, if you want to look at it that way. So... We said in E major, we have F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp. Now B major, you've also got the A sharp. So like I said, all five. You're gonna start in the right hand with your thumb on B. And then we got C sharp with two and D sharp with three. Now your thumb comes under on the E. And then the rest of the notes are sharps. F sharp, G sharp, a sharp, and then you end it with five on B. Now coming back down, you've got A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, the thumb on E, cross over third finger on D sharp, C sharp, and B. Did you notice that the thumb plays on the white keys? Uh, the pinky does too on the, on the B, but in both cases, the thumb's on B, or the starting B, and the E, the two white keys. And now there's five on that B. Coming down, there's thumb on the E, thumb on the B. So there's some nice organization going on here. You've got thumb playing uh, the white keys, uh, of course, excluding the, the five up there. And then you've got two, three, and four playing on the, the black keys, the sharps. And like I said, we're playing all five sharps. So I find it to be a little bit easier. I hope you do as well. Now the left hand, like I said, is a little trickier. It's different, four on B. Um, we're not even going to use our fifth finger at all, so you might as well just go ahead and forget about it in the left hand. Four on B, three on C sharp, two on D sharp, and the thumb also on E in the left hand. So the checkpoint there is a little different. Remember, it's in the previous scales, it was the third note of the scale, and it was the third finger in both hands. Here, the fourth note of the scale is our checkpoint. We'll get to that more when we put the hands together. So you're gonna go four, three, two, one, and then you're gonna go four, three, two, one, once again. So you're gonna cross over to four um, on the F sharp, and then three on the G sharp, two on the A sharp, and thumb on the B. Uh, so it's similar to the right hand. You've got thumb on the white key, and we're gonna go down now, A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, and you're gonna bring your thumb under to a white key, E. 
and then you got two on the D sharp, three on the C sharp. Uh, but this is a little different. Like I said, you're ending with four on the B um, and no fifth finger at all. Let's do that one more time. So four on the B, three C sharp, two D sharp, thumb on the E. Now, uh, uh, the previous scales... Yeah, that's what I thought. So when you did E major, you crossed over to three, right? Well, here in B major, when you get to this E, it's a big crossover. You're crossing over the four. So that's going to take a little extra practice getting used to that. Four on the F sharp, three on G sharp, two on A sharp, and thumb on B. Coming back down, two on the A sharp, three on the G sharp, four on the F sharp. So that means it's a bigger cross under as well. Because here you are on the fourth finger and you got to go all the way down to your thumb. And then two on D sharp, three on C sharp, and we end it with four on B. Now putting the hands together. So this one uh, is different, obviously, because normally we had five and one. And we've got four and one on B. So we got our Bs there. We've got three and two on C sharps. And then two and three on D sharps. Now here's our first checkpoint, it's thumbs, but you gotta bring that thumb under in the right hand. And then right after that, you're gonna big the big crossover in the left hand, a four on the F sharp, two on the F sharp in the right hand. Here's another checkpoint, this one's with threes. Threes on G sharps. And then we've got two and four on the A sharp, and we end with one and five on the B. So coming down to A sharp, two and four, our little checkpoint, threes on G sharp, four and two on F sharp, and then the big cross under in the left hand, thumb on E. You also have the right hand thumb on E. And then you cross over in the right hand. Now, don't uh, don't go to the fourth finger. Your, your uh, left hand just did a big, you know, cross over and cross under with the fourth finger. But in the right hand, it's the third finger. So you got two on the D sharp and three on the D sharp. And then C sharp. And end it with four and one on the B. Let's do that one more time. So we got the B, four and one. Uh, C sharp, D sharp. Thumb comes under in the right hand for E. So that's our checkpoint, E's with the thumb. Big crossover in the left hand, four on F sharp, two in the right hand. And then we got threes in both hands on G sharp, and then A sharp, and then end it with one and five on B. Coming back down to A sharp, G sharp, F sharp, the thumbs on E's, Bring that right hand over to D sharp for the third finger. Three and two on C sharp and end it with four and one. So in some ways I find B major easy. In some ways it's definitely unique and different and sort of on its own. Now speaking of on its own, we're gonna go into flats now, F major and B flat. Uh, these are the only two flats that are covered in this book. Um, the flat scales are a lot more challenging than the sharp scales. Most of the sharp scales had the same fingering. G, D, A, and E had the same fingering. And B had uh, the same fingering, at least in the right hand. Now, this book doesn't go into the other two sharp scales, uh, F sharp major and C sharp major, which, um, oddly enough, I won't get into this too much, are identical to two of the flat scales. In harmonics, that's called. So F sharp and G flat are actually the same scale on the piano. They, they play the same notes. And um, what was the other one? C sharp. C sharp and D flat are actually the same scale too. But we're not going to hit on those today. But my point is on the flat scales, every flat scale has different fingering. So you're learning a different pattern for every one. Now, sometimes I get asked the question, why can't I use this fingering pattern? Why do they have that fingering pattern? Uh, when you're doing one, one octave like we are, um, you could probably get away, truthfully, playing one octave with a variety of fingering. But the point of playing your major scale, eventually, is to actually play it two octaves and eventually three and four octaves. Um, the, the music standard, like in school, is to play... Uh, four octaves going up the piano and down the piano. 
And the only way to do that quickly and smoothly is, ha is to have like the perfect fingering. And with all the fingering that people have thought of, this really is the best system. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, that you're not just doing it for one octave. You're doing this to eventually branch out into multiple octaves. That's really what this is designed for. Now, the one octave is, is good at getting you used to the key because two octaves is repeating the same notes that you're playing in one octave. So one octave is great, but the fingering is the technique needed actually for multiple octaves. So if you're ever curious, like why this fingering? Why don't I just do my own? Uh, you might get away with it now, but eventually that will bite you and bite you pretty hard. I've been there. <laughs> it's not fun with scales to, uh, to do a different fingering. So we'll stick with this fingering. F major. One flat, so at least we're going down now to just um, just a few accidentals. So the one flat in F major is B flat. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with our thumb on F. Now, the right hand fingering is already a different pattern than what you've been used to. You're actually going to go up all the way up to four before you cross. Normally, it was three, but there's sort of a rule in scales that you never cross the thumb to a black key. I don't think that ever happened. If you look at uh, B major, that thumb was always playing a white key, right? If you look at E major, the same thing. The thumb was always on a white key. A major. Yeah, so talking about fingering and smooth playing and technique, uh, the thumb crossing to a black key just never made that really work well. So I don't believe you ever see that, at least, at least not in major, and I don't think in minor scales now. There's other scales out there lots of other scales where that might happen, but I'm not an expert on it at that point, not offhand anyways. So with F major, we've got our right hand thumb on F, two on G, three on A, and instead of crossing, we're gonna do four on the B flat and then cross to the thumb under to C, and then finish it up. Now when you finish it up, notice you got four on F. So here's another scale well, where you don't use your fifth finger, this time in the right hand. So no fifth finger in your right hand for F major. So you end with four on F and then coming back down, three on E, two on D, thumb on C. The big crossover is four on B flat. So it's not crossing over to three, it's crossing to four and then just finish it up, three on A, two on G and thumb on F. So let's do that one more time. Go all the way up, fourth finger to B flat and then cross your thumb under on C end with four on F, come back down, four over to B flat, until you end it with thumb on F. Now the left hand's different, you are gonna be using all five fingers, and if I remember, yes, the left hand does have the same fingering as the left hand did for a lot of the sharp scales, not B major, because B major, you know, started with four, but we're starting with five. So this pattern is five, four, three, two, one, and then crossing over to Three, two, one. So five on F, <clears throat> four on G, three on A. Then you got two on your flat, B flat. Keep going till you get to the thumb on C and then cross to three on the D. Two on E and thumb on F. Come down to two on E, three on D. The thumb comes under to C. Remember your B flat, two, and then three four, and five. So let's do that one more time. So five, four, three, two on B flat, one on C, cross to D with your third finger, and with thumb on F. <clears throat> so going back down. When you have three on D, bring your thumb under to C, the two on B flat, and then three on A, four on G, five on F. Now let's put the hands together. So it starts with five and one, and then four and two. Threes continue to be our checkpoint here on the A's in this case. Now B flats, two and four. And here we have another checkpoint, if you will, thumbs on C. Now remember the right hand's got the cross under. Your left hand's already there. And as soon as that happens, your um, left hand crosses to three on D. So it's three and two on the Ds, two and three on the Es, and then end it with one and four.
on the Fs. Now coming down, E's, D's, and remember the C's are our thumbs, so your left hand crosses under, so we got thumbs on C's, and then the B flat, your right hand comes over to four, so we got two and four, and then we have threes in both hands on A's, and then finish it up with G and F. So we'll do it one more time, starting on five and one on F. Go all the way to B flat for your first cross under in the right hand. And then your cross over to D in the left hand. Should end with one and four on F coming back down. So thumbs on the C's, so cross that under in the left hand. And then two and four, so four goes over to B flat in the right hand. And then A, G, and F. So a little different, but certainly not the most difficult of scales. And I think part of it in this case is just one flat. You just have to remember that B flat. So speaking of B flat, now we have B flat major. So now it has two flats, B flat and E flat is the other flat. Now this is where it's both difficult and easy. And I say that because it depends what kind of, what kind of brain, I guess, is, is that the term? What kind of brain you have? <laughs> what kind of brained person? I'm not sure how to say that, but how you think. Uh, so some, so there's patterns in music <clears throat> and I love to teach by patterns. Um, sometimes when I recognize a pattern, it's almost like the light bulb goes off. But I don't know if everyone works that way. Some people, you know, learn other ways. But if, if you like patterns, uh, B flat might be your best friend. It's kind of interesting how this pattern works. Um, that being said, it's still hard. I find this to be one of the harder scales. Um, first, the, first off, the bizarre thing about it is uh, it doesn't start with your thumb in the right hand. Now, here's a reason. Remember what I said about the thumb and the black keys? It just doesn't happen in scales. So... You're actually starting with four on the B flat, and then immediately your thumb comes under. Now that's awkward. That's very awkward to start right off the bat with that. Now I've seen an option, but I wrestle with this. I've seen the option where some books will say you could start with two. Now in every book, you've got to have thumb on C. Remember what I said, it's not just for this one octave, it's so you can play multiple octaves. That's what this fingering's for. Um, so obviously starting out with four to one is just an awkward start. Now you can do it. Obviously that's what they have. But I've seen books where it's two and one. But here's where I wrestle. When I go all the way up, I'm going to end up on four on B flat. Now for one octave, this doesn't apply. But what happens if I go two octaves? Well, there's my four on B flat and I'm going to go to thumb on C. I'm not, my point is I'm not going to end up with two on B flat. I'm going to end up with four. So I wrestle with it because yes, you could start with two, but in the grand scheme, you're going to always end up playing all the B flats with four. So consistency, I like consistency. So I like to start on four on B flat because I'm going to end up with four on B flat. And if I go another octave, I'm going to end up with four. If I come down, I'm just used to doing that four. So I could do that, but now at this point going to two, it feels awkward to me because I got used to four on B flat. So I'm going to say stick with the four. You may see books where they give two as the option, but personally I stay away from that because I love consistency. Um, and it's just, it's just better to practice this because you're going to do it anyways. So go ahead and just start with four. All right. So four on B flat, but then the thumb comes under the C. Two on D. Here's our other flat, E flat with the third finger. And then after that, your thumb comes under to F. And then you're gonna finish it up, two on G, three on A, and then there's that four we talked about on B flat. So coming back down, A, G, F, cross that three over to E flat, two on D, thumb on C. And then the last thing you do is cross that four over to B flat. Now again, with one octave, the two might feel easier. But get in the habit of doing four, I recommend it. Um, 
Let's do that one more time. So four on B flat, thumb under on C, and then two on D, three on E flat, and then thumb under on F. So if you think about it, your cross unders occur after the two flats. Thumb under on C, and then thumb under on F, and then end with four on B flat. So coming back down, when you come down, you cross over to your two flats, three on E flat, four on B flat. So those are some kind of the patterns I was already telling you about earlier. Um, the two flats alternate between the fourth and third finger. Four on B flat, three on E flat, four on B flat. And if I kept going up the scale, um, it would be the same. Three on E flat, four on B flat. Um, the other pattern I see, of course, is the thumb. It comes under when you go up the scale after the flats. So here's the thumb under to F. And when you come down the scale, you cross over to the flats. So that can help with the learning and memorization. Now the left hand is the opposite. And this is where it's going to be both hard, but maybe kind of makes sense when you put the hands together. So the left hand, we got three on B flat, and then two on C, thumb on D, and then you have four on E flat. So that's the opposite of the right hand, right? Because it was four on B flat and three on E flat. But here you got three on B flat and then four on E flat. Now this one's a little awkward because after the E flat, I just go right up the scale, three on F, two on G, thumb on A. But then I have this one last little crossover at the very end to three on B flat. Now, after we do that, you know, we usually keep playing, right? But we've reached the end of an octave, so that you don't want to twist your hand. Keep that thumb on the A because you're going to go right back to it. So you might get used to doing this. Thumb on A to 3 on B flat and then back to thumb on A. Just And again, you might say, well, why don't I just cross over to 2? For one octave, that would be easier. For multiple octaves, it won't work. Because if I cross over to two, then what happens if I go up another octave? Yeah, see, I'm kind of stuck coming up with crazy fingering. So, um, again, stick with what we got here. So, thumb on A, three on B flat, back to thumb on A, two on G, three on F, four on E flat. And then that's when you cross under to the thumb on the D, two on the C, and three on the B flat. So once again, three on B flat, two on C, thumb on D, cross all the way to four on E flat, three on F, two on G, and thumb on A, oh, and three on B flat. I almost forgot about that. See what I mean? The last minute crossover is kind of sneaks up on you. Right back to the thumb on A, two on G, three on F, four on E flat. Bring that thumb all the way under to D, two on C, and three on B flat. Now, when you put the hands together, this is not easy, but that fourth and third finger really work together in this piece. In both hands, it is your fourth and third finger that only play on your flats. But the trick is, it's three on B flat in your left hand, it's four on B flat in your right hand. And then right away, your thumb crosses under to C. So you've got twos on C's, and then you got thumb and two on D. Now your left hand crosses over, but remember it's four on E flat and three on E flat. Then your thumb has, has to cross under in the right hand on, to F. So it's three and one. Then you got, this is a checkpoint. You got twos on G's, that's nice. And then you got thumb and third finger on A. And you finish with three on B flat and four on B flat. Now, if both hands are on the same finger on the flat, it's wrong because it's always opposite. It's going to be three on the B flat in the left hand, four on the B flat in the right hand. So let's come down now. That thumb, see where my left hand is? I swung over, but I need to keep it there because I'm going right back. So thumb on A, three on A, and then the twos on the G's in both hands. 3 and 1 on F, 4 on E flat, and bring your third over in the right hand to E flat. So do a check there. You can do a checkpoint there too. 4 and 3. 
Different fingers, they work. Um, where are we at? Okay, bring that thumb way under to D in the left hand, and then two on D in the right hand. Two and one on C, and you end with, remember it's not like three and three, it's three and four. And that's gonna be the trick too, because it doesn't feel comfortable, it doesn't feel natural to do some of those, like that four on B flat. But remember what I said, it's not for this one octave, it's preparing you for when we do multiple octaves in the future. So one more time, make sure it's three and four when you start. And then two and one on C's, one and two on D's, and then four and three on E flat. Three and one on F, the twos on G's, one and three on A, and end with three and four on B flat. Coming back down, one and three, the twos on G's, three and one on F, four and three on the E flat, cross under in the left hand to one on D, two in the right hand on D, two and one on C, and end it with three and four on B flat. So the B flat scale is the trickiest of the bunch, I think. Um, but what I was saying earlier about that light bulb going off is it's kind of like recognizing it's only three and four on the flat keys, right? But it's also recognizing their opposites. Three and four on B flat, four and three on E flat. And so at first it's just like, what? That can be really confusing or it can be like, aha, I see. And probably most of us is like, yeah, I see it. It's just doing it. <laughs> so like a lot of people I know say, I got it up here. I got it in my head, but I can't get it down here. Slow practice, of course, really breaking it down, talking it through. And like I said, pausing uh, when you need to. Don't worry about even this anytime soon on the B flat scale. Work out the fingering and work out the coordination. So, but when you get, up, get it up to uh, speed, at least even this, it'll sound and look like this. So it sounds like any other scale, but the way it feels with those third and fourth fingers and those cross unders and overs where they're placed, um, yeah, it's a very difficult scale. So that one's gonna take the most time, I believe. And of course you can see less than 10, uh, a lot more involved than less than nine. Every scale we dealt with today was a different fingering. And of course the flat scales are very different. But remember some basic rules we learned that your thumb in both hands um, is not going to be playing any of the black keys. So that can help with crossing under and crossing over. Uh, often enough, well, at any time your thumb crosses under or over, it's, I guess it's always going to be under actually, your third or fourth finger cross over. That's another thing to learn. Third and fourth finger cross over, thumbs cross under. Um, but the thumbs always go to a white key. And often, I don't, not always, but often, the third and fourth finger went to black keys. So uh, there's those little tidbits, you know, it can help you. Of course, I find the checkpoints nice. It doesn't tell you where you're supposed to go or where you're going and where you came from, but it is a checkpoint. So if you note, like in F major, if we make note that A's are always the third finger in both hands, you know, and if for some reason you're not there, this happens. Say, whoops, that's wrong, because I know A is supposed to be the third finger. That's why I call it a checkpoint. You can check yourself at that point and make sure both hands are in agreement. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, just remember with the scales, once again, um, slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. Um, accuracy before speed. There's definitely no speed here on this lesson. This is just learning the basics. And of course, remembering that the fingering isn't just for one octave, it's to prepare you for two, three, and four octaves. Actually, once you've learned two octaves, then you've learned basically three and four octaves because it's repetitive fingering. But going into two octaves, the fingering to get into that second octave is a little different. 
I won't get into that today, but um, I think level two or level one of this book starts dealing with that. Um, so you will get into that. Um, but again, this, this is actually a lot of information for preparatory level, you know, B major, five sharps. Um, that, that's some pretty heavy stuff. So I wish you all the best. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions, comments, just uh, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.